What's up, YouTube? So today, I'm going to be talking about what I listen to when I work out. First things first, you know, I've been lifting weights, doing some sort of fitness for the past 25 years, since I've been 14 years old. Currently 38. So most people look for when they're deciding what to listen to when they uh, work out is what gets them motivated to go to the gym. What gets them pumped. My instance, you know, I've always been a fan of uh, of rap, specifically, you know, gangster rap, the subgenre, trap rap, whatever it's called nowadays. Uh, trap is basically like all hardcore rap these days. But, you know, originally it meant down south rap. You know, like Southwest, Texas type rap, Houston, uh, South rap in general, Southern rap in general, like, you know, Atlanta. Uh, stuff like that. Florida could be trapped too. But anyways, back to uh, what I recommend. So, I get all my mixtapes, or I used to get all my mixtapes from a website called www.dappip.com. You get all kind of uh, rap, hip-hop mixtapes for free, but they've stopped updating it, I want to say, like a year or two ago. Plus, at least half the albums you upload are all streaming only, and that doesn't do me any good. You know, I want to listen to each individual track to figure out which ones I like the best and which ones I don't like. What hits hardest in my trunk? By the way, I got factory speakers, so it's not like I'm rolling around like I uh, did did years ago, where I, you know I was spending you know a grand uh, fifteen hundred on a sound system for my vehicle. Now factory speakers are uh, what I do. So. Hip Hop TXL is probably the best ongoing rap mixtape series of good rap songs, good rap tracks. This is more of the radio friendly type of stuff. And I don't particularly get into radio friendly anything as far as music is concerned. But when I do, I go to Hip Hop TXL to get the freshest, just the best mixtapes there are. Tried uh, Rap Life on uh, iTunes and it just wasn't as good. Plus, it, they, they want you to pay like 10 bucks a month, whereas Hip Hop TXL, you can get it for free. Nowadays, I just found this out a week or two ago. You want to go to a website called www.livemixtapes.com, and that's where Hip Hop TXL has been submitting their newest, most current rap mixtape. You can download the entire mixtape get access to each individual track whereas before they used to be streaming only you could only stream the entire album as a whole or download the entire album uh, as a whole but now you can once again access individual tracks on livemixtapes.com if you're anything like me you also do get sick of listening to music when you work out you want to head in another direction so when you do I'd recommend getting in a podcast. Podcasts are a, a relatively recent discovery on my behalf. You know, I didn't listen to these in the past much and uh, just got into them. So I want to say within the past year or so. The two podcasts I listen to is number one, Time Suck by Dan Cummins. Funny guy. This is more hi history-oriented type stuff. Um, it's different from Joe Rogan, you know, Joe Rogan just has people he interviews and he gets into some cool stuff too, but in my opinion, I think Dan Cummins is where it's at nowadays. Him and his wife are like amateur comedians, so he injects his own humor into his podcast, which is why I listen to it. Another great podcast that I got into, which has unfortunately been canceled, is Supernatural with Ashley Flowers. This gets into urban legends, myths, horror, real life horror, things like that. However, Ashley Flowers, the host, uh, has since gone on maternity leave. Therefore, it has been canceled. After podcasts, I would say get into full cast audio dramas. Now, these, you know, I know these are pretty nerdy, um, whatever, you know, who gives a shit, but. These are actually very well done when you do find some full cast audio dramas that are quality. I would say the best full cast audio dramas that I've listened to are by far the Audible original 
Alien series. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of the Alien franchise. I mean, I do like it. I've seen all the movies, even the the, the lesser, uh, more campier entries like the AVPs, but these are all done pretty well. Alien number three. There's an alternative script for Alien number three written by this well-known sci-fi author by the name of William Gibson. He wrote the book Neuromancer, which came out in 1984 and basically single-handedly both kick-started as well as influenced the cyberpunk uh, subgenre within sci-fi. It's a great, great full cast audio drama. They've hired a lot of the same cast from the main Alien franchise and as well as, I believe, Sigourney Weaver, or Sigourney Weaver plays uh, Ellen Ripley in this one, too. I believe that's who they cast as Ellen Ripley, or if not, you know, a very close voice actor that, who sounds like her. I can't quite remember. Uh, it, it was done really well, though. Hollywood-level audio production with sound effects, with great voice actors, everything done very well. It's about an hour and a half long. Once you're done listening to Alien number three, I would get into Alien Out of the Shadows. Alien Out of the Shadows is about 10 hours long off the top of my head. Each episode is broken off in a one hour time block, and they cast Rucker Howard. Rucker Howard is a very well known actor within uh, sci fi horror. He played opposite of Harrison Ford in the original Blade Runner film. Good movie, by the way. I really like that one. Great cinematography, great visuals, extreme amounts of detail. Plot was a little boring, it was a little slow. The story was a little slow, but as a uh, for its visual aesthetic alone, that's the reason why I like this film so much. Once you're done, listen to Alien Out of the Shadows, get into Alien River of Pain. River of Pain is also broken off into one hour segments uh, or episodes off the top of my head. Uh, and it was it, it was good. It was good, but probably the the weakest in the alien in the whole alien franchise. This is really like the middle entry. The last thing you want to listen to when it comes to the Audible Alien series is Alien Sea of Sorrows. This is the most action packed of all the full cast alien auto dramas that Audible offers. There's all kinds of firefights, action, excellent special effects. I highly recommend it. Next is the BBC Radio full cast audio dramas based on the work of Stephen King. So BBC, the British Broadcasting Corporation, has been doing these full cast audio dramas for years. Salem's Lot's a good one. I just finished last week. Very, very quality. Then get into Pet Cemetery, also quality, shorter than Salem's Lot. The Mist is only an hour long. It has this uh, unique 3D sound gimmick that they advertise. The sound was particularly good in this one, however, it's only an hour long, so that's my main gripe with it. And then there's, there's of course, Misery. Misery is uh, has also been adapted into a film, good movie, starring the same actress that was cast in the film adaptation of Dolores Claiborne. Also pretty good film as well. Misery as a as an audio drama was, was decent. I mean, it wasn't as good as uh, Salem's Lot of Pet Cemetery, however, it was still pretty good. From there, I would say get into An American Werewolf in London, which is based on an alternative script of the film. Very, very good. The werewolf transformation scenes were awesome. In fact, I might even prefer them to the film. Johnny Monomic is another full cast audio drama I really enjoyed. This is based on a short story, again, by the sci-fi author William Gibson. This was also turned into a movie in 1995 uh, starring Keanu Reeves with smaller roles featuring Dolph Lundgren and Henry Rollins of Black Flag fame. For those who don't know about Henry Rollins or Black Flag, he was a punk rock singer back in the 80s. Uh, he's played small roles in a lot of, uh, well not a lot, but like you know, sci-fi and horror. He, he started in the movie The Feast. After that, the last thing I would recommend is to get into a short story. And I found a, a good narrator on Spotify that uh, had, had narrated this, but it's called I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream by Harlan Ellison. This was a short story that was written in the 1960s. It predates 
all the stuff it went to later on influence about like a hostile uh AI that that basically takes over the world. But I'm not anyways, I'm not gonna ruin it for you. It's pretty good. I really enjoyed it. I just listened to this past Halloween. Next I would say get into the app Libby. Libby is a free app available for Android and iPhone and it grants you access to all audiobooks within your uh, local library network. Unfortunately, the one thing that I did not like about Libby is the exact problem existent with uh, brick and mortar libraries. Once you want to borrow something, they put you in a queue. So in Libby's instance, it's a virtual queue. You know, you're, you don't you don't have any tangible books. You know, to 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 pick up at the library. Libby is just audiobooks, and but they have a really good selection. Also, Libby offers a free subscription to The Great Courses. The Great Courses are typically cost about hundreds of dollars. It's college professors giving, giving uh, lectures on a variety of topics, like just about everything, history, business, whatever. You're going to find something that you'll like to listen to on The Great Courses, even though I would say it's very information dense. It's probably the most boring and least engaging of all the things I previously mentioned. However, if you want to learn something uh, and, and and you just want to go to the more educational route, I would recommend The Great Courses. and You can get that free subscription from Libby. Otherwise, you're paying a lot of money just to get access to those. Being 38 years old, I don't need somebody on YouTube screaming at me to go to the gym. I don't have a problem with motivation going to work out. I do like to listen to music that gets me pumped. However, I've listened to so much music while working out over the years that oftentimes these days I just want to switch it up. I want to switch it up to unplug my brain, put my mind on autopilot. So when I'm bouncing up and down on the elliptical, walking up and down the Stairmaster, jumping rope, squatting with hundreds of pounds on my back, whatever it is, if I want to unplug my brain, I will find a way to do so, whether it be through music, podcasts, full cast audio dramas, audio books, or even listen to college courses. And that's it. That's the end of this video.